Atlas's Megami Tensei, a great franchise known for such series as Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Summoner, Digital Devil Saga, Devil Survivor, and of course, Persona. Megaton has swiftly become one of, if not my favorite game franchise of all time, even though I was only introduced to it last year. I'm Titanium Llama, and this is why you should try Megaton. In the 80s, a Japanese author known as Ayane Shitani published a series of novels under the moniker Digital Devil Story, Megami Tensei, meaning Reincarnation of the Goddess. The novels focus on teenage computer genius Akemi Nakajima as he tries to stop Loki, which he summoned with his creation, the Demon Summoning Program. Yes, he summoned a demon with just his computer. It, it was a weird time. Now, I'm not going to go into many plot details here because it would take a while, and frankly, the novels are pretty cheesy, so let's just skip to the game part. So without further ado, Megami Tensei. Wait, that's Telenet's version of Megami Tensei. Yeah, there are two different Megami Tenseis. This one is a mediocre top-down dungeon crawler for MSX computers. It's a weird bit of trivia. Anyways, without further ado, Further ado, Megami Tensei. This game is what kicked off the Megami Tensei franchise. After all, the series was named after it. Although this game is what started it all, it's extremely different from modern SMT and Persona, and is notoriously difficult. The plot is essentially the same as the first book, again, I won't go into any plot details, especially if for some godforsaken reason you want to play this yourself, but this game set the foundation for many of the features that would later become staples in the whole franchise, such as demon negotiation and fusion. After a mediocre success, Atlas decided to create a sequel, Megami Tensei 2, which deviates heavily from the plot of the novels and introduces more mainstays to the, to the series such as multiple endings and the little enemy icon to let you know how many demons you have to fight. Megami Tensei 2 was also the first game the legendary Kazuma Kaneko did the art for. 2 was better received than the first one and sold a bit better, but Atlas wanted to completely break free from the novels, so they gave their new game a new title, Shin Megami Tensei, which can be translated as New or True Reincarnation of the Goddess. Shin Megami Tensei sold way better than the previous two games, introducing even more mainstays such as the alignment system allowing for multiple endings. More on that later. After the success of the first game, Atlas made a sequel, SMT2. The second game was, yet again, even better th received than the first. And after this, things get really complicated. Spin-off after spin-off was released, all and mainline continued to get more releases, although not very often. Most of these games were well received, even being critically acclaimed, but one of them was special, Persona. Persona was, at first, heavily influenced by ma the mainline SMT games, SMT IF primarily, due to its high school setting. Persona further expanded on this, being more of a character-driven game, but still had many similarities to SMT. Persona 1 and 2, the closest to SMT, were extremely popular in Japan, but they weren't very well known in the West. When Persona 3 released, it was radically different from any Persona game that had come before it, adding dating sim elements on top of the standard RPG stuff. And while not a major hit, this game along with SMT3 Nocturne and Digital Devil Saga helped Megaten as a whole become more popular in the West, which meant more localized games in the future. The next game in the series, Persona 4, was very successful in the West, getting many spin-offs of its own such as a dancing game, multiple animes, and even a crossover with Persona 3. Hype was at an all-time high for Persona, and then, one fateful day in 2013, Persona 5 was teased, and in 2014, we got the release date for the West, 2015. Only a few years off. Persona 5 was met with wide critical and financial success, and to this day is the best-selling game in the entire Megami Tensei franchise, outselling the entirety of Mainline, and that's your brief history lesson on the entire franchise. I skipped over a lot, and I mean a lot of stuff. This franchise's history is so massive and so deep, if I talked about it all, this video would be hours long. So if you're curious, I'd recommend visiting the Megami Tensei wiki. They have all the info you'll need to become a major Megaten nerd. Anyways, onto why you should actually play these games. Uh, 
the gameplay in Mega Ten games is really quite unique. Whether you're playing SMT, Persona, or even Demikids, you can be assured Atlas will add their own little flair to the gameplay. In modern mainline SMT and Persona, I really enjoy their combat systems. The one more, and especially the press turn systems of combat, make the battles infinitely more exciting and dynamic than your standard turn-based RPG battle systems. The one more system, introduced in Persona 3, is pretty simple. When you exploit an enemy's weakness, you can perform another action, and the enemy can exploit this as well. Persona 5 expanded on this with the Baton Pass, allowing you to give that extra action to another party member with a few buffs. The Press Turn system was introduced in Nocturne, and is personally my favorite battle system to ever be put into a video game. It's similar to the one more system in that you can gain extra actions when you exploit enemy weaknesses, and the enemy and and the enemy can do the same to you, but it applies to the entire party, being indicated by little press turn icons, usually in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Almost everything in the battles affect your press turns, be it demon negotiations or running from battles. If you plan enough, you can completely stop the enemy from moving, because reflecting their attacks or nullifying them eliminates most if not all of the opponent's press turns. But remember, the enemy can do the same. The amount of press turns everything affects depends on the game, so yet again, if you want to go into specifics, I'd recommend the Megami Tensei Wiki, or just playing the game. These are only two of the battle systems of many in the entire franchise, and I believe these two are some of the best out of all JRPGs, providing more immersive and fast-paced gameplay. Outside of battle, the gameplay is also extremely diverse. In SMT, the exploration of each game's unique worlds are wonderful and extremely immersive, almost like a massive puzzle. The Persona allows you to hang out with your friends and even date cute girls, which, believe it or not, affects what you do during the battle portion. It creates a really interesting gameplay loop. Devil Survivor has a similar system to Persona, except a bit toned down, having certain actions take certain amounts of time, which can actually decide whether certain characters live or die, so be careful who you decide to spend your time with, or you might just kill your waifu. The stories in these games have the advantage of generally being self-sustaining, meaning you don't have to play a previous game in the series to understand the current one. Sure, there will probably be a few minor references you won't get, but that's just fan service. If you want to play SMT4 before playing 1-3, through go ahead, you'll enjoy it just as much. Besides that, if you like stories about freedom versus security and wars between angels and demons, you'll love Mainline. If you like stories about the nature of society and the relationships between people, go ahead and try Persona. I guarantee you there is something you'll like, because even the stories are extremely diverse, although most of them do take place in a modern or futuristic setting. Generally, in Mega Ten games, there are multiple endings, even if it's just good and bad. Besides Persona, Mega Ten often lets you choose your ending based on your actions, throughout the game, none of them being labeled as right or good, just the one you chose. How could I have gone this far in a Mega Ten video without talking about the demons? The demons are the creatures of the Megami Tensei franchise, often spanning multiple games from multiple different series. Unlike Pokemon, you are encouraged to fuse these demons with each other to create new and more powerful ones as soon as possible, instead of keeping a few for your entire playthrough. Often, demons do not have many level up skills, and in some games, demons don't even level up at all, so fusion is nearly mandatory. Now, you may be asking, demons? But what about personas? Those are a unique case. They are demons, just given a different name. Generally, stick with demons as an all-encompassing term for the Mega Ten creatures. Demons themselves are all based off of religious, literary, or pop culture figures, such as Lucifer, Alice, and Terminator. Please Atlas, put Terminator in another game, he's fucking amazing and I love him, my baby. Each demon usually has a small paragraph that gives its history, so you can tell your parents you're learning. Each demon is also expertly designed except for a few exceptions, but generally each demon is really well thought out and instantly recognizable. Whether it's Shoji Meguro, Ryoto Kazuka, or any of the other many composers for this franchise, the soundtracks are always legendary. Here are a few of my favorites.
Each Megaton game typically has a theme for its music, such as Persona 4's theme being J-Pop and Devil Survivor's being Brock. If you want to listen to more of my favorites, I'll leave my playlist in the description, but really you should just play the games yourselves. I love discovering the music in them. For newcomers to the franchise and RPGs in general, I would recommend Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal. It's where I got my start and are still my favorites to this day. Besides that, they are very easy games compared to the rest of the franchise and allow you to change the difficulty at any time. Also, SMT5 is going to release in November, and if you're looking to get into mainline instead, it looks like an amazing game to start out with. These games are also the easiest to get, being for modern consoles. For those who want a bit of a challenge, I'd recommend SMT4 and Persona 3 Portable. These are both great games, and ones that I personally did not have much of an issue with difficulty-wise, but they're significantly harder than Persona 5 and even Persona 4. While they are a bit hard to obtain, both being on dead or basically dead consoles, they're a good starting point for any RPG veteran. For those who really want to challenge themselves, I'd recommend Persona 3 FES and SMT3 Nocturne. Both of these games are exceedingly difficult, Nocturne even more so than FES. FES is sadly locked to the PS2 for physical or the PS3 for digital, so if you don't have either of these consoles, you're out of luck. Originally, Nocturne was in the same situation, however, a remaster released earlier this year for PS4, Switch, and PC. Only caveat is its price tag, being $50 without the DLC. After you've played at least one of these games and gotten a grasp of the mechanics, I'd recommend delving into the other spin-offs, such as Devil Survivor and Digital Devil Saga. Mega 10 is a fascinating series with a very rich history and many games for you to try. No matter what type of person you are, there's something for everyone. Hell, if you always had the fantasy of killing Hitler, you can do that in Persona 2. Not even kidding. This franchise has become so ingrained to my heart, I couldn't help but make a video about it. If any of this sounds interesting to you, I implore you, give it a shot, play a game, and if you don't like it, that's alright. And if you'd like to learn more, there are plenty of resources on the internet and an abundance of videos here on YouTube. So have fun exploring Mega 10.